All right, continuing along with our dot product, the next thing I wanna talk about are the direction cosines. Uh, when we're talking about a two-dimensional vector, right? we had our vector out here in, in two dimensions, like in the board. We said that its direction was based off the angle it created with the positive x-axis. So again, this little angle right here. What if this is actually a three-dimensional vector out here in space? How do we give its direction? Well, the way that we give its direction are, are called the direction cosines and are based off of what the angle the vector would make if it was drawn in standard position, again from the origin, the angle it makes with all three of the axes. Uh, so you got the angle between the x-axis and that, we're gonna call that alpha, the angle with the uh, vector in the y-axis we're going to call beta and the angle it makes between the z-axis down to that that we're going to call gamma. So how do we figure out what all three of those angles are or the direction cosines for those? Uh, well it's pretty simple. Um, here's what we're going to do. To find the angle between two vectors we're going to use the standard unit vectors for each one of these directions. So for the first one, if I'm gonna look for alpha, I'm gonna find the angle, alpha here, the angle between the x-axis and the vector u. Well, the x-axis, the unit vector would be, uh, I'm gonna do u dot i over the magnitude of u, magnitude of i, right? Because i is the standard unit vector in the x-direction. All right, so let's walk through this. I'm going to generically write u as u1, u2, and since we're in three dimensions, I'm going to write that as uh, u3, and i would be 1, 0, 0. I'm going to leave this as the magnitude of u right now and the magnitude of i. So here we can see that the cosine of alpha, well, the dot product is going to be u1 times 1, plus u2 times zero, plus u3 times zero. So the whole top is just u1. And on the bottom, I don't know what the vector u is, so that stays the magnitude of u, but I do know the magnitude of i is one because it's a unit vector. So here we can see the cosine of alpha is u1 over the magnitude of u. So this is called the direction cosine for our first angle. Now if we're gonna do the same thing, I'll do one more and then we'll just, yes, not. The cosine of beta, that's the angle between the vector and the y-axis. So we would do u dot j over magnitude of u, magnitude of j, and much of the same thing's gonna happen. Right, this is u1, u2, u3, dotted with zero, one, zero, all over magnitude of u, magnitude of j. So cosine of beta will be, on top if you do that dot product, you're just gonna end up with u2. And on the bottom we get the magnitude of u. Now I'm gonna kind of skip to the point. Uh, of course the, the third direction would be the same. The cosine of gamma would be u3 over the magnitude of u. Just do the exact same thing with that. So these three pieces here, uh, these are called our direction cosines, which I'm just going to go and round in. Cosine of alpha is uh, u1 over magnitude of u. Cosine beta is u2 over the magnitude of u. And cosine gamma is u3 over the magnitude of u. The direction angles, well, what would the actual angles be? Of course, here all you do is take these three values and do the uh, arc cosine, so alpha is the arc cosine of uh, u1 over magnitude of u, beta is the arc cosine of u2 magnitude of u, and gamma, come on, gamma is the arc cosine of u3 over the magnitude of u. So uh, the actual direction cosines are when you leave it like this, of course, that's gonna be a value on the right-hand side. If you wanna find the actual angle, you do the arc cosine of both sides. Now there's actually a pretty easy uh, relationship between all three of these, and I'm gonna leave it to you to prove it yourself. 
but the cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma is actually equal to one. Don't believe me? Square everything on that side and add them up and see what you get. Okay, so that's an interesting little relationship. These are called the direction cosines and the direction angles. So that's how we tell the direction if we're in three dimensions or actually higher dimensions also. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the projection of a vector. Uh, we've kind of seen uh, hints of this just a little bit when we were doing our dot product uh, earlier. Uh, I'm going to draw a very simple picture that we've already seen. Let's say I have the vector u is the vector 2, 3, and I drew that up here like this, in standard position. And I said, how much does u go in the direction of i? So u dotted with i, of course, is 2, 3 dotted with 1, 0, which was 2. And the way that we saw this, here was the vector i, and we saw that this dot product, product gave us that length there of 2. Now, to extend this idea just a little bit more, what if I wanted to see the projection of this vector? So basically, I want to turn this vector into the shadow on the i. So what I'm actually looking for is what would that blue vector right there be? Really, that's just the shadow of that. So you're kind of thinking about up here, if you go perpendicular to the vector that you are uh, projecting onto or projecting on the eye, and you think about that if you have a light bulb up here, right, kind of a light bulb, then that would be the shadow, the blue vector would be the shadow of that on the eye. So how do we figure out what this vector is? Well, notice all we'd have to do is take the vector i and multiply it by two. So this vector right here is really just 2i. Um, we need it to be a little bit more gener generic. What if what we're projecting onto isn't a unit vector, right? What if I'm just taking one random vector here, I didn't write what it was, some random vector u and projecting on some other random vector v. Neither one of them happen to be unit vectors. Well, First, let's take a look at our notation. We're going to write it as a projection. This is the projection of u onto v. So the u is on the same line as the projection. The v is a subscript right there in the beginning. And you can kind of see that the u is on top, so u onto v. So think about it like this. We have two random vectors out there, u and v. If I want the projection of u on the v, we can do basically the same idea here. The only difference is I have to turn what we're projecting onto into a unit vector, kind of like the i was. So I'm going to make this a unit vector. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make that a unit vector. We make something a unit vector by dividing by its, its magnitude. So now, if I want to know what the distance is here, what would I have to do? Well, how did I find this 2 here? I did the vector I'm projecting dotted with the projector I'm ve or the vector I'm projecting onto. So the, the length will be u dotted with v over the magnitude of v. Okay, so that's the length. That's like the number 2. So to get the vector, what do I have to do? All I got to do is take that number and multiply the unit vector that we're going in. So the vector, or the projection, would be this number. Remember, this is just a number. I'm going to write it like this, u dot v over the magnitude of v times our unit vector here, which is v over the magnitude of v. Now, generally, we clean this up a little bit, so I'm going to write this as the projection of u onto v. Since the magnitude of v here is just a number, I'm going to swing that inside with all the other numbers. This is u dot v over the magnitude of v squared times v. So if we were to do this, 
Here's the what you would be thinking about. I'm gonna get this out of there just for a second. What is the actual projection? Well, if you go to the end of the vector you're projecting and you drop a perpendicular line down to the vector that you're projecting onto, the projection is that vector that would be created from there to there, to where it's ending up. So that's what we found. We found the, the, the link, or we found the actual vector that is really the shadow of U onto V. Now, I wouldn't try to memorize this formula like this, because if you change U's and V's or throw W's in there or whatever letters, it gets complicated. Here's the easiest way to remember it. It's always the dot product over a magnitude squared times a vector. Now, which vector shows up the most? Well, it's whatever you're projecting onto, the vector you're projecting only shows up in the dot product. So just the dot product over the magnitude squared uh, times a vector. So let's uh, try an example of this real quick. Let's say if I said find a projection of V onto W, where V is the vector two, three, and W is the vector one, Four. Okay, now again, we could take our formula and just replace u's and v's with these v's and w's, but here's the way I'm going to think about it. I'm going to write the projection of v onto w. I know the top is the dot product, and I know everything else is the vector that I'm projecting onto, so it's going to be a magnitude of w squared times w. All right, so let's find all these pieces before we put it all in. So v dot w will be 2, 3 dotted with 1, 4. That's 2 times 1 plus 3 times 4. So that's 2 and 12, which is 14. The magnitude of w squared is going to be 1 squared plus 4 squared, which is 17. Okay, so we should have just about everything we need here to plug into our formula. Okay, so according to this, I'm just going to kind of bring this across here. U dot V was 14, magnitude of V squared was 17, and W is the vector 1, 4. So our projection here would be 14 17 comma 40, 56 17. Okay, so the projection is just a formula. Make sure that you kind of follow how it works out. Um, let's take a look at this picture I just drew here a second ago. Got some vector here. If we did the projection onto the x-axis, we would end up with this vector here. But a lot of times we also want to know what the other direction would be. So how could we actually figure out what the projection to the perpendicular axis would be? Right here, we, we projected down this way perpendicularly, right, as a right angle. What would happen if we went the other way at 90 degrees? Now, I drew this on our X and Y axis, so it's easier to see. But this can be twisted into any direction. How could I figure out what this blue vector is here? Well, think about it like this. If down here was our vector V and this is our vector U, then the red vector that I drew here is the projection of u onto v. That's the red vector. Well, to get to the blue vector, all I'd have to do, just a bit. all I'd have to do, think about it doing as directions, I could go u, then the opposite of the projection, right? If I went the direction u, then that way, this would be the negative projection. That would give me to this blue vector here. So the blue vector would actually be u minus the projection of u onto v. This here is called the orthogonal component, the other direction. To find the orthogonal component, you always do the projected vector minus the projection. 
All right, so here, if we wanted to find, for this particular problem, if we wanted the, the orthogonal component, which in this case does mean perpendicular, orthogonal component, what would we do? We take the vector that we were projecting, here we were projecting V onto W, so we take the vector we were projecting, two, three, and then we would subtract the projection. So 14, 17, and 56, 17. All right, do that arithmetic. I'm not going to do it for you. Do that arithmetic, and that would give you the orthogonal component. Now, one place that you're going to see this projection show up quite a bit is in the topic of work, which we're going to go over a couple of times this semester. In the most basic form, work is equal to force times distance. That's kind of in its, like I said, the most basic way of thinking about it. It's how much force is applied over how much distance. That'll tell you how much work was done to move whatever you were doing here. This is implying that the force is in the exact same direction as the distance traveled. So let's say we were moving a box along a floor. If the force is completely in the direction that we're moving, then this works just fine. But what happens is something like this. And let's go to something we've all done in, in, in real life. Let's say that you uh, are pulling somebody on a wagon. Okay? When you're pulling a wagon, you're actually pulling in that direction, but the wagon is moving in this direction. So the total amount of force that you're using isn't all going into moving the wagon. Part of it's going into actually technically lifting the, the wagon up, right? Because there's a piece of this that's going that way and a piece of it that's going that way. So if we want to figure out the force here, what we actually want to do is we want to project the force onto the direction that we're moving. So the way that this normally works out is we create a vector here, P, Q, so we have a starting point and an ending point. So we make the vector P, Q, or Q, P, doesn't matter which direction it goes at. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna project our force vector onto that. So one way to write this is work will be equal to, well, we wanna find the vector for the force that's down here. So the red vector here, this is going to be the projection of the force onto the vector PQ, because that's the direction that we're moving. So since all the force isn't going in the direction of PQ, that's gonna tell us how much force is actually being applied in the direction of motion. Now that's a vector. These up here are scalars. So to figure out what that scalar is, we need to do the magnitude of the projection of the force on the PQ. And of course, the distance here, the distance is, well, that's the vector PQ, so the distance there would just be the magnitude of PQ. So there's one way to look at work. Now, you can actually simplify this formula, prove it to yourself, put in the, the equation for the uh, projection here with the absolute values on it, or I mean the uh, magnitude, same thing here. And this actually, simplifies just to f dot pq. So it's a much simpler formula to do this. So for all your work formulas, you're gonna have to uh, write your force uh, thing as a vector, your direction as a vector, and then plug it into your formula here. That'll tell you how much work has been done by this force to move from one spot to another spot.